Hey Rap Bags, it's Jay today giving you the lowdown on a legendary armor set, the Godsent Armor. This will make your abilities, your powers that you get from defeating the bosses so much stronger and maybe more useful. It's another one that you're going to have to spend a good amount of time finding certain keys to go ahead and unlock, but absolutely, if you do, it's a fairly easy set to actually utilize. As you get it straight away, you don't have to craft it or defeat any bosses. Check out the rest of my legendary series where I take a look at all the end game gear that you can get in Core Keeper, all really unusual stuff, and let's go. So basically you're looking for a Titan Temple. It's quite large and it's around 650 blocks from the core. So whenever you look on the map, you see in the top right corner, there will be some numbers. The top numbers are the coordinates and below that, that's how many blocks away from the core something is, wherever your cursor is on the map. Of course, biomes are procedurally generated, so they might be in different directions on every map, but every map has them. So wherever your desert of beginnings is, whether it's to the east, the south, the north, or the west, you then just got to pan around and find the certain spots that it will say 600 to 650. The actual temple entrance here was 602, but the actual chest where you'll find the loot was 650. There'll only be one entrance, as there should be some unbreakable walls encasing the whole temple. When you get to the room that's got all of the thrones, make sure you just dig through the blocks behind. So you might need quite a high level mining score to do so. The small anti-chambers on either side in throughout this temple as well, offering more crates and stuff to obviously go ahead, destroy and get more loot. But if you keep going deeper into the temple north, eventually you'll come to a room or an area with three rooms behind these walls. So even before you found the keys, if you come across this temple, you should be able to go ahead and just pretty much take the chests with you. At least I think you can. You certainly can afterwards once you've unlocked them. And these are special key items. They are called or named after the bosses like Omrumph, Asios, and Rahakar. Inside each one of the chests is a special piece of armor to make the set, as well as some accessories and other stuff. So in the Omrath chest, you will find the Godsent King Mask, which gives 38 max health, 19 armor, 8.4 damage, and 4% additional chance to trigger Raka's soul power. And when wearing all three, it's going to give you 85% longer dash ability. You'll also get this exact same amount of loot every time, a Noble Ring giving 37 max health, and 20% more healing from health over time. The ancient golden coins are really valuable, you can sell them for a ton of coins, plus some obviously gemstones and a golden jellyfish. This is an offhand item and it's going to give you 1.9 health every second. So that's what you're getting, not only improvements to your soul powers, but a good amount of health and a good amount of extra damage. So make sure you obviously go and dig through the walls either side of that first temple. If you're not paying enough attention, you might only think there's one room, but dig through either left or right and you'll find the other two chests. This one we need the Aceos Feather. Not that unique, but you will get the Dash Feather from Aceos in here, which you can get from killing him directly. Septum Ring that gives 19 armor, more of the valuables and ancient gemstones, and the Breast Armor for the Godsend. 50 max health, 27 armor, 9.6 extra percent damage, and 6% additional chance to trigger Aceos's soul power. And finally, Rahaka's chest has got obviously the legs. Same valuables as before, but this time you get a necklace that's going to give 19 magic damage and 20.1% minion damage, and a concealed blade 9% critical hit chance, which obviously is a offhand weapon. The trousers themselves, 46 max health, 23 armor, 9% damage, and 3% additional chance to trigger armor of soul power. So how much of a difference does it really make? Well, it definitely all relies on what kind of build you're using, making sure that you're going for something with lots of critical hit, so any accessories that will give you them buffs, and obviously any foods. That's hopefully to trigger the ASIOS power the most, which I have been struggling with, often never really activating. The Omrif only activates with ranged hits, and the Soul of Rahaka activates on melee and ranged. So really, this would work well for any kind of range build mostly, but maybe switching over to a melee build with something fast moving like a dagger or anything that's going to give lots of critical hits. The powers, I do feel, need a bit of a rework. I do feel like they just are too sporadic, especially it is Aceos's one where it just randomly generates every time you kill a slime, I swear, in your base, meaning that you have to go and repair all the walls it's damaged. And there are some other items that can also accentuate your powers too, so I'll be probably doing a full breakdown and maybe a class guide for this in the future. Right now this armor set doesn't do or increase any of the other soul powers that you get from the Hydras. 
Also, look out for a secret entrance on the left-hand side. I don't think it really changes. There will be a tunnel of the special desert wall that you can dig through, and it'll take you to a secret room at the very top at the back. It can be hard to spot, but once you see it, it's pretty much good to go. There might be a turret that's blocking your way, but keep digging through another turret, and then you'll get into this chamber with tons of pots, as well as an astral jellyfish, which is obviously a pretty rare food that you can go ahead and cook. So where do you find these keys? They'll be situated in a special grave or sarcophagus inside usually one of the larger maps in the Desert of Beginnings. These mazes can be pretty tough as they'll have poison traps and lots of turrets, so you might want to make sure you're bringing obviously a hoe to break any of the poison traps. Also a really great chance of finding lots of different chests. You'll find obviously the gold ancient chests as well as plenty of galaxite lock chests. There's lots of nice decorative items in the main chamber, which will have again a lot more turrets inside. You'll also come across a couple more valuables inside the coffin as well. It's always the same loot that you find in each individual one of these actual sarcophaguses, so there'll always be the diamonds as well as the skulls. So this Aceos coffin is found in obviously, like I said, the large maze, around 500 tiles from the core. These mazes are massive, they can be absolutely huge, so it may take a while to get your way all the way through. Hopefully if you've got enough digging skills and you've maybe got Stormbringer, that makes definitely a lot lighter work. Omarimp's coffin and the large maze is around 700 tiles from the core. This time you get skulls, but also kingfish scales as the valuable. And of course last is Rahaka, and that's about 500 actual blocks away from the core. You get the Raka key, and yes, you'll get some more valuables, a bag of marbles, and a small skull. It can be challenging finding these mazes, even though they are quite large, or at least getting through to these areas. But in fact, the temple was probably the one that I have most trouble finding. There's lots of places where there will be 650 tiles away. Obviously, you just got to make sure you are in the desert beginnings when you're using your cursor to look. My desert was mostly in the west and north which meant there would be a location with 650 tiles, mostly to the west, then maybe to the northwest, and then directly maybe to the north. Although mine did actually leak out into the northeast, and that meant that's where I had to find the 650 blocks to the northeast as well. So as long as you can deal with the traps and you don't mind having a good look around, with the right digging power, you can actually get this armor set pretty early. Certainly early enough once you either get a Galaxite pickaxe or a Scarlet one with the right gear so you can dig through the desert walls. The full suit combo effect, as I said, does extend your dash, but that only obviously applies to items that help you dash, not the actual rift lens. And you can see it really helps move pretty rapidly. So you might want to consider using it against maybe the final boss encounter, which I won't spoil here, but I still think the rift lens is better. If you go ahead and decide to upgrade the armor sets, you won't get any additional increase in the soul powers for the first level that you upgrade, but you will increase your max health, your armor, as well as the damage output on the other stats. So if you max out to level 19, you'll end up getting overall a 32% damage increase wearing all three, 83 max armor, and a max of 160 health but it does look like it only increases the soul powers by 1% extra for each one when you go ahead and upgrade them. And that only begins at level 18. So for a relatively easy to get once you know where it is armor set, it's pretty good. That damage increase, and especially if you've got anything else that can contribute to activating your powers, particularly good maybe for boss fights or taking on lots of enemies at once, utilizing ranged or melee build. But at the moment, it still definitely feels something off with, like I said, some of the powers. I was regularly triggering a couple of them, just not Aceops. Even though I was doing tons of melee hits and I seem to be getting some critical hits, remember it's still a relatively small percentage chance. Only 16% on a critical hit, so you've got to factor that in too. If you wear the accessories you've got, like the golden jellyfish perhaps, and obviously the ring, then part of the idea is that you can tank a few hits while you're utilising your powers and hopefully getting them to activate against creatures and enemies. And nearly forgot, of course, you can reinforce it using Galaxite bars, so that'll increase the power, at least, of some of them attributes, but not maybe the soul power. And there you go. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, leave a like, make sure you're subscribed. Go and check out, like I said, the rest of my legendary guides that I'm taking a look at all the unique weapons in the game, as well as armor sets and more. And I'll see you right back some more Core Keeper soon. Bye-bye.